Hi everyone, my name is Adaku Parker and I'm the owner of Dovetailed London. I sell African wax print fabrics and I wanted to say first of all thank you to Sewing Quarter for having me on. Um, if you want to have a look at previous shows that I've been on, have a look on, and this is me trying to remember the dates, the 29th of March 2019, the 10th of May, the 14th of May, or the 15th of May, sorry, not the 14th, and also then the 25th of October. Those are previous shows that I've been on, so do have a look at those if you'd like to. So I sell African wax print fabrics. I also um, design sewing patterns that I sell, and I also um, run workshops. And as if that wasn't enough, I've got a book coming out in summer 2020. So that's quite exciting as well. Um, more about that later. Um, to start with, I just wanted to say a little bit about the fabric. People always ask, what is African wax print fabric? They ask, does it still have wax on it? Um, the answers are, so African wax print fabric is, if you like, a term of art used to describe cotton fabric, so they're all 100% cotton, printed using the wax resist method of printing and or dyeing fabric. Um, uh, this is done on sort of huge machines, huge roller machines, and so essentially you'll start with a sheet of white cotton, um, you'll then take that cotton and using wax you will um, attempt to create designs and then you'll, uh, the areas where the wax hasn't been applied, the beginnings of the design are be um, starting to, as it were, take shape. You'll then uh, dye um, the fabric. So the areas where the wax hasn't been applied, the dye will penetrate. You'll then remove the wax, that's sort of step one. Normally dyed in indigo, you'll remove the wax, that's step one, and then um, you'll repeat the process using more wax until you get these sort of just absolutely stunning, beautiful, intricate designs that you see um, I'm wearing and also on the mannequins behind me. Um, so in terms of washing the fabric, using the fabric, I always recommend that people wash the fabric at either 40 or 30 degrees, just a, a short wash, a, a cool spin. Um, and then next step, really important, is that you press the fabric. So press the fabric with the iron, lots of steam, and that will really help to soften the fabric. Then you're ready to cut and sew. Um, one of the things you will see on African wax print fabric is that there's writing on the selvage. I'm going to show you some in a minute. So when I um, show you some, I will refer back to the writing on the selvage. But essentially, the writing on the selvage reads the right way up on the right side of the fabric, and the writing on the selvage reads, as it were, almost backwards on the wrong side. Because um, it's printed on both sides of the fabric, it really makes the designs very vibrant, very bold, which is fantastic. But it sometimes means that once you've cut away the selvage when you're making up your garments, you then may not remember which is the right side and which is the wrong side. So what I like to do is before I've cut the selvage away or cut into the fabric to make up my garments, I'll take a piece of chalk and I'll just draw kind of really long lines on the wrong side of the fabric to um, remind myself later, because those chalk marks will still be there, which is the wrong side. So that's a really, um, a really good tip. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate for you um, a bag. Well, not the whole bag, just part of a bag. You, um, some of you may have seen, if you follow me on social media, that I was on Kirsty Allsop's Handmade Christmas. I was um, on episode seven, which was the Handmade Gift Competition. Um, it was shown on the 3rd of December, at, um, on f at 5 p.m. on Channel 4. Now, depending on when you see this, it may or may not, the episode may or may not still be available on 4OD. Um, but if it is, then do have a look. Um, so I'm going to be making part of that bag. So the bag took uh, four hours on the show. 
and a little bit more. Um, there was also um, cutting of the pieces that um, I was allowed to do before the show, and that took at least an hour. So um, I won't be spending five hours showing you how I made it, but I will um, show you just the section. In fact, it was the section that I demonstrated to Kirsty that she helped me to finish. So that should be quite exciting. Now, the other exciting part um, is that Kirsty Allsop, um, she absolutely loves African wax print fabric, which is brilliant. And she was wearing on some of the episodes on the recent show, so the 2019 um, handmade Christmas show. I think it was episodes one and four, she was wearing a fabric that I sell. And then on episode six, she was also wearing a fabric that I sell. So I'm just going now to show them to you. Um, some of you may be excited. So this fabric, let me try and cut it and open it up. This fabric, wrong scissors for this, she was wearing um, as a shirt dress on episodes one and six. And if you're able to see, or you've seen it before, um, the way she wore it was really quite exquisite. Uh, it was a shirt dress, and perhaps just to show you, the stripes were running this way. And so it just looked stunning. And then you had a circle skirt. So it was a shirt dress. It looked very much like a circle skirt because it had quite a lot of flair. Um, so this was the one she was wearing. So it was this fabric she was wearing on episodes one and episodes six of her 2019 um, programme. And then I'll just show you the other one <laughs> that she was wearing on episode four. So the first one I showed you, I've called it Sparkles and Stripes. So if you want to look for it on the Dovetailed website, just look for um, Sparkles and Stripes. And this fabric here, which is just absolutely stunning, um, she was also wearing as a shirt dress on episode four. So if that's something you'd be interested in trying, then do. Um, have a look at you know, how she has worn it and hopefully you'll get some inspiration for how you might make something with it too. But definitely um, garments that really make as much of the fabric as possible are ones that I would recommend. Or upholstery or, or anything else that you might be interested in. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a demonstration. And I'm going to stop moving around so much, if possible. So I'm going to be making um, the outer part of the bag in this fabric, this gorgeous um, green and pink fabric. So I've got two pieces here, one and two. This is the back and the front. I have got here in um, pink faux leather the side panels. I have the base of the bag here. And here I've got two pieces which will be the facing. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'll put all of these to the side. The first thing I'm going to do, I'd like to remove this because it's a bit annoying. Um, just bear with me. So I'm going to try and just remove that sticky thing there. This is on. Great. That's not the way to test it, Adaku. OK, that's fine. That was always going to happen. So the other thing I didn't mention is that this is my latest sewing pattern, Megan. And you can see it here as well. 
So by the time you're watching this, this pattern will be available to buy. It is a tunic pattern with patch pockets finished with bias binding, um, available in sizes 8 to 26. And as I say, by the time you're watching this, um, this will be available to purchase. It's also, um, I'm also wearing it in a slightly different um, design. So I just want to remove that brown label. A pressing cloth, I forgot, unfortunately. But let's see if I can do this. too bad at all that came away quite easily which is fab okay put the iron down all right so now I'm going to sew the front and the back together along the shorter end using a 1.5 seam allowance And then I'm going to press this seam. I'm not, these are annoying, but I'm not really worried about them because of where they are. Now that I've pressed that seam, what I will do is get my base. So what will happen is that this will, as it were, sit on top here. And then this will be the front, this will be the back, and this will be the base. So what you'll want to do is to um, sew um, along here and along there attaching the base to the um, outer back. But before we do that, we'll want to prepare our bag feet. The great thing about this is that it's just a great way of protecting your bag. So if you want to put it down somewhere, um, but you want to keep the actual bag itself clean, then these, these are great. Bag feet, they're called, um, and they're really, really good for that and really easy to install as well. So, if I look for my quilting ruler, which is hopefully not a million miles away, and a pen. So, I've already made marks here and here. So, those marks are the centre of this base. I sort of, I put my quilting ruler in thus and I counted came to about five inches and I marked the two and a half inch point um, what I'm using so as I say this is pink faux leather and then I'm using um, Peltex for the um, base that's the first interfacing that I use and then 
Timex, I believe this is called, a, or, or a sort of a, it's a stiffener. It's, um, how would I describe it? It's sort of plastic, hard plastic. You can hear that. So um, look for something similar. They're not that easy to come by, but you can, you can get these. Um, obviously, because I've got them here. So um, the next thing you want to do then, I'm probably going to try and put eight feet in. So I want to try and measure eight um, equal, equally spaced points into which I can then insert my bag feet. I'm using roughly a um, half an inch seam allowance, five eighths of an inch seam allowance. So um, that is roughly what we have on the outskirts, on the outside of the really stiff um, plastic interfacing that I'm using. So if I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that's twelve. So I'll measure halfway mark is roughly six. I'd come down about one inch at, um, eventually, but for now, I'll just measure six. I'll measure one in from the edge, and I'll do the same on the other side. And then I'll measure two here, or two and a half, I should say. And then I'll do the same here and then an inch. And I'll come down an inch. Yep, that's fine. And so there, I will mark my first. So don't use your embroidery scissors, Adaku, and don't use um, your um, seam ripper either, but this is what I have. So I'll just be as careful as I can. So just make an incision try and make a slightly larger incision. You will take your purse feet. I should have, um, but I think they're in a different bag. I might have one. So these things, these are just to, if you can see that. So these come as, as, as a set with the purse feet and just um, essentially mean that if for any reason the foot catches on something, this should stop it kind of ripping the whole bag or the whole underneath away. So th that's just more of a protector. So you'll push your foot in. You might need to make your hole bigger. So just take your time if you do. And then once it's in, you will open it up like this, and then you'll get this part of it, push it down, and then there you are. I hope you can see if I lift that up slightly. That is how it should look on the inside, and then that's how it will look, oops, there we are, on the outside. Okay, and then you'll repeat that, I'll try and do it quickly, you'll then repeat that along the length. Let me just do three. Um, just to speed things up. So I'll do six in total, three on one side and three on the other side. Right.
I don't think I have any more of these little things, so that's fine. We'll just carry on. Ding, ding, ding. I need so many new sewing tools. I mean, I'm using a, a pen, pen for goodness sakes. I'm sure there's better things out there for this, but there we are. It does the job. last one in right and then you'll take your outer bag and position this I'll just mark a notch a small incision where I know the center is so I'll mark a small incision there and then another small incision there and then I'll line up that with the centre seam of this bag. I'll get some bulldog clips. Try and find some more. Pin it there. Yeah, I, I use bull, bulldog clips for these because you don't want your pins to perforate the leather. And also, um, bag making, the layers can be so thick that often, you know, your pins don't really stand a chance. Um, so it's worth investing in some bulldog clips. Um, and really, you know, you can get quite long ones. These ones are, that I'm using are quite short, but you can actually get some um, pretty long ones. So I, I'd get I'd get some of those. So then, um, using perhaps a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to attach the base along here and along there. And a walking foot is really a, a must if you're making something like this. told there, were, there may be problems with this machine it looks like it has come to pass well I've managed to sew um, that one seam which is great um, but I think the machine doesn't really want to do any more but essentially you would as it were stand it like this Okay, let me see if I can um, fix this. I'm not going to spend too long trying to do it. Um, let's see.
Okay. So let me do the other side. And so with that um, attached, you will then um, use your edge foot to stitch down here as close as you can to the edge and then the same on this side. Okay, so make sure you've tucked in your raw edges don't worry about here because this will um, form part of the seam allowance when you eventually attach the side panels to the bag. So you would attach the side panels to the bag, right side to right side on this side. You would do the same right side to right side on the other side, all right, and then your bag will begin to take shape. Okay, and then the um, facing, you'll first stitch the facing together at the shorter ends, and then once you have the circumference, if you like, of your bag, you'll then be able to attach the facing. But I'm having problems with the machine, so I think I'll just, I'll have to leave it there in terms of the demonstration. So the other, um, let me tidy up a bit while I talk to you. So I wanted to say actually a huge thank you to everyone on social media. People on social media are so nice. Um, I posted on, in fact, it was Sewing Quarter fan page, um, a picture of me with my finished bag and the number of likes and lovely comments has just been absolutely amazing. And just to say a huge thank you to everyone who has shown me so much love on social media. It's, um, it's very, very touching, really. So thank you so much for that. Um, so in terms of what's coming next for Dovetailed, I'm going to be, um, I've actually moved into a new studio. So the new studio is in West Ferry. That's near Canary Wharf in London. Um, I moved in, I think just yesterday, actually, I started moving my things in and I'll be having an open day. So I'll be having an, an African wax print fabric pop up on the 25th of January. Um, have a look on my social media for details of where it's going to be. So it's going to be between 10 and 6 on the 25th of January, which is a Saturday. I'm also going to be holding workshops at the studio. Um, so there's a four week um, course that will be starting, I believe it's Thursday the 9th of January. And then it's going to be every Thursday um, from the 9th until the end of January, which I believe the last Thursday is the 30th, something like that. And I believe the times are um, 6.30 to 9.30. So come along. Week one, we'll just be doing a kind of an introduction, some basic scenes. And then weeks two, three, four, we'll be making a, a cushion cover, um, an apron, and also a tote bag. But you don't have to come to all four um, workshops if you don't want to. You can just uh, dip in, as it were, to the one that you want to do. So that's absolutely fine. Um, and I've also got a new book coming out. I think I mentioned that already. So that's called Sewing with African Wax Prints. Um, and I'm really excited about it. So that should be out in the summer of um, next year. 
So yeah, there's a lot going on, <laughs> a lot to keep me busy. Um, and I think that's it. I've really enjoyed being on Sewing Quarter. It's such a great show um, and it's been really lovely. All the people that we've met and you know all the fun that we've had. But um, follow me on social media. My handles are um, at Dovetailed London. That's at Dovetailed London and do keep in touch. Um, sign up to my newsletter on my website. It's www.dovetailedlondon, not Dovetailed London. The website is www.dovetailed.co.uk. And if you sign up to the newsletter, you can get 10% um, off your first online order. I don't spam anyone, okay? I will just tell you where I'll be, what I'm up to, what's coming next, any discounts, that sort of thing. Okay, but um, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. I'm doing, again, most of the usual shows next year, um, kicking off with, oh, my pop-up. Um, but apart from my pop-up, I will be at, um, I think they're calling it the Stitch Festival now. The Stitch Festival, that will be at Angel. So it's a knitting and stitching show. It used to be Olympia. It used to be in Olympia, it's moving to the Angel, and that's where I'll be. That will be, I believe it's February next year, February into March. So I'll see you all there if you can make it. And I'll be at the NEC, and I'll be at Ali Pali, and I'll be at Harrogate. So I'm sure I'll be seeing you um, this year. Okay, take care. Bye.